I'm happy to announce I have a couple of new stackers in the family. As someone who converted them to buy precious metals and as a stacker of over 17 years myself, they asked me to give them the rundown on how to buy, the best to buy, where to buy, and a ton of other questions regarding stacking advice. I was like, oh, I don't really have a faster comprehensive answer for you. It's a bit more complicated than that. So I sat down and I created a list of 10 things new stackers should know. We will go over those 10 things coming up. Hey everyone, welcome to Campbell's Coins. I'm hoping to keep this short and sweet as to not lose people's attention because let's face it, lists can be very boring. That being said, this is a broad based list and not extremely specific. I wanted to give new stackers a starting point, a launch pad, not sit here for two hours covering every single caveat. If you have a new stacker in your life, feel free to share this video with them. Let's dive into this thing. I'm gonna start with an honorable mention. Don't buy precious metals with a credit card, not because the government can track this purchase, but because online dealers charge so much more for credit card purchases than they do for check and wire transfers. I don't care if you earn cash back. An average markup for a credit card purchase on a one ounce gold coin is 12%. Let's say that you earn 2% back on purchases with your credit card. And I think that's being a bit generous too you are still paying a 10% premium versus someone who pays with a check. They are only paying five to 6% over on average pay with cash or a check. If you don't have the funds to buy what you want, sell something or save up. Starting at number 10 shop from reliable sources, counterfeit collectible coins and bullion are out there. Stay away from eBay and Craigslist when buying precious metals. The best place to get collectible coins and bullion is from your local coin shop, also known as LCS. But you wanna make sure that that LCS knows the difference between a fake and the real deal. A good LCS will test everything they buy off the street with very expensive tools. Sigma machines are great, but they are also the cheapest of these testing devices and they can be fooled. Specific gravity machines and x-ray machines cost a lot more, but they have a much lower degree of error. You want an LCS who is experienced at pointing out which coins and bars are fake just by looking at them. You also want one who is willing to buy back a coin or a bar if it is determined to be a fake. Online dealers are another great option. I would say you're almost 100% certain to not get a fake from one of these, companies, but I have heard of one company who I won't mention on here that was buying silver rounds from people and then reselling them, but they weren't testing the silver that they bought. Some of this purchased silver was counterfeit. They would know if they took the time to test the metals. In a second, I will mention the companies I recommend. These companies will cost you more than buying from an LCS. Buying from an online dealer also has a couple of challenges, not including increased pricing namely shipping. Most of these companies ship out gold, silver, and platinum very well and discreetly, but sometimes that is not enough to deter male thieves. Have you seen the video of the rail yards in Los Angeles completely littered with packaging? Male thieves are breaking into rail cars and stealing what's in there. It's like the 1870s all over again. Keep in mind that male theft is a lurking threat and sometimes it can happen from the carrier you ship with, whether it's UPS, FedEx or USPS. A few companies I've spent tens of thousands of dollars with and have had great experiences with are Monument Metals, SD Bullion, JM Bullion, and Atmex. They don't pay me to mention their name. I'm not offered anything from them. I'm just listing good places I've had good experiences with. There are other online dealers out there, but I have only had experience with these four. If you want to eliminate the possibility of mail theft, purchase in person from your LCS. Do whatever you feel comfortable with doing. My LCS is a few hours away and I can only get to them on the weekends, but I'm also very busy on the weekends. I reach out to them on Instagram and ask what they have. 
complete the purchase, and they mail me the product. This LCS that I speak of is Avenue Coin, and I highly recommend them for collectible coins to gold, silver, and platinum bullion, and everything in between. Their staff is extremely knowledgeable and friendly, and I have found their pricing just can't be beat. Another LCS I strongly recommend is Royal Coins Houston, down in Houston, Texas. They are phenomenal. I have a coupon code that you can use with Royal Coins to get a discount when purchasing from their website. Their coupon code is CC. I don't get anything from you using this code. This is just a appreciation code for my audience. Neither Avenue Coin or Royal Coins is paying me to mention them. I just like listing good businesses. I'll put their info down in the description. Number nine, shop around. Online dealers are great. You can see the product you're getting, the condition, the description, and the pricing, but each will have different pricing for the same item. If you choose to buy from these sources, look around for the best deals. Same goes for an LCS. Just because an LCS exists does not mean that they have great pricing or that they are knowledgeable. I look for a knowledgeable staff, good customer service, honesty, and pricing when it comes to my LCS. Sometimes I'm willing to pay a little bit more knowing I'm supporting a good local business. I check my LCS before buying online for just about everything, but online dealers will have items I just cannot find at my LCS. You guys are gonna wanna scoot in closely, listen closely here, okay? Here's a pro tip for those living in states who have a tax threshold on precious metals purchases. Buy from an out-of-state LCS. I've said too much. Avoid the FOMO. Stackers buy precious metals because we know the economy is not well and has not been great since it died in 2008. There is a message out there that the economy is going to collapse imminently. I've heard this message for so many years and it still hasn't happened. If I went into debt to buy precious metals when I first heard that message, I would be hurting for a few years or forced to pay off that debt. The economy will collapse but many underestimate our government's ability to keep the party going. Cash injection after cash injection keeps big companies and banks afloat. But how long can that really last? Buy precious metals at your own pace. I get precious metals because I would rather be 10 years too early to this collapse than a minute late. I know that statement elicits a feeling of FOMO, so I will just leave it at, buy precious metals at your own pace. Buy the coin and their bar best for your region. You will see a lot of videos on the best silver coin to own or the best gold coin to buy, but there isn't a one size fits all option. The American Gold Buffalo might be a great purchase in the United States, but it is not a great purchase in Great Britain or other countries. In Canada, stackers are taxed on gold coins that aren't a minimum of three nines fine pure gold. So many Canadians avoid the American Gold Eagle. I'm a stacker and a collector in the United States, and that is the audience I focus my message towards. That's not to say I don't appreciate my out of country audience. I love you all. It's just that my expertise is things happening in the US and American money. If you live outside the United States, you might be able to apply some principles that I mentioned to how you purchase, but taxes and laws will vary with every country, and it's near impossible to keep up with everything. Don't tell people you stack gold, silver, and or platinum. I know that sounds ironic considering I'm a stacker and a collector with a YouTube channel and I'm putting my face out there all while talking about precious metals, but I do it for you, the people, because I really felt a calling to help people understand sound money. I take many necessary precautions and my stack is well hidden in numerous locations. I don't keep much of anything where I live and you should take similar precautions. You might trust somebody and tell them what you're doing, but then they blurt it out to another individual that you own precious metals. And that person either tells others who rob you or get you into situations you don't want to bother with. Just keep it to yourself. I'm always looking for new investments. Ever since I got my first job at the age of nine, I have put all my money into gold, which is currently at an all time high. So I have a certain amount of money. 
I've said too much. Before we jump into the last five items on this list, if you're getting anything out of this content, hit that like button and consider subscribing. Now let's get back to the list. The problem with precious metals is storage. I like storing my precious metals where I can get to them quickly and easily. I've heavily invested in gold, which I've buried in several different locations around Pawnee. Or have I? Many people like storing their precious metals at home, but that has its own obstacles. For example, theft. Most home insurance doesn't cover precious metals, and as the years go on, more and more are eliminating it from their coverage. If precious metals are stolen from your home, it can be difficult to recover. So if you plan on buying precious metals, make sure you have the ability to lock it up and hide it away in a place that best protects you and the metals. Thankfully, gold and platinum is extremely small. It stores a lot of wealth and it's very easy to hide just about anywhere. Silver has storage issues simply because it's cheap to buy. Gold and platinum store a lot of wealth in a small package, and that is why many people just buy these metals over silver. Silver has a lot of potential for growth, but that's a video for another day. I do not recommend storing your precious metals in a bank. Don't trust big banks or small banks. Banks are Ponzi schemes run by morons. If the bank is robbed and your box is broken into, the bank doesn't cover precious metals. I also don't recommend paying for a vault service, not out of experience, but because of the cost that it takes to store those metals there and the accessibility. Most of these vault places are located in larger cities, so if you live further away, that's a long drive for you to go back and forth to get what you need. I also love the mantra, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Beware of unearned wisdom and do your research. What are the best places to learn about precious metals? YouTube is one of the greatest resources for learning just about anything, and that includes stacking and coin collecting. I would avoid listening to just one channel. Listen to a lot of channels to get multiple perspectives and information. There are a lot of good resources out there, especially on YouTube. There's also a lot of people who started their stacking journey in the last few years, and they are just repeating messages they hear from others. They also don't have this long-term experience of seeing the precious metals market fluctuate with specific events over the span of a couple decades. A good YouTuber won't have constantly changing messages. For example, you might see a video saying, why I'm all in on silver. And a few months later, that same YouTuber has a video, why silver is the worst buy. These are just gimmicky clickbait titles designed to get views. This flip-flopping message doesn't really help people. I mean, I can't tell you how many videos I've seen of people saying that they won't buy silver in 2022 because it's at $22 an ounce. But at this exact time last year, in January 2021, they were shouting from the rooftops to buy silver when it was at $29 an ounce. Why would you buy when silver's high, but not buy when it drops in price? It's that type of logic I just can't take seriously. Additionally, you'll see videos explaining why gold and silver market jumped up in price, but a week later when the price drops, erasing all those gains, they have zero explanation. None of these people are financial experts, including myself, but they managed to masquerade as such. That's not to say that only financial experts exist in a large institution or that you should only listen to major media outlets for financial information. I'm also not saying that there aren't great YouTubers on here who give out great information. Just be very careful who you choose to listen to. There are a lot of dummies out there. Okay, Peter writes, should I be worried about Bear Stearns in terms of liquidity and get my money out of there? No, no, no. Bear Stearns is fine. Do not take your money out. This is real. Look, if there's one takeaway other than a plus 400 or something, Bear Stearns is not in trouble. I mean, if anything, they're more likely to be taken over. Don't move your money from Bear. That's just being silly. Don't be silly. Man, money's back after the break. This jerk off still has a job on TV. If you're into coin collecting, PCGS has a lot of great information uh, and pricing on collectible coins. That's a good base to start from if you're into collecting. Online dealers have a quick summary of each item that they sell that can also be very helpful. One of the best places to learn is also from your LCS, 
look for an LCS who's been around for a while and has the experience and knowledge. Once you've found a good LCS, build up some rapport with them. It takes a lot of time to learn the ins and outs of much of this stuff, and that journey is fun all by itself. Your purchases can have consequences. I've always advocated for you to purchase whatever makes you happy, but you have to understand those purchases might have some issues attached to them. They might be difficult to sell if you had to sell them, or they might have hidden tax implications, or it might cost you more in the long run. For example, my brother really likes these 007 gold bars from the Royal Mint. Atmex charges almost $200 over spot price for them. He buys whatever he likes, but if he were to sell these to an LCS, they would probably offer less than spot for it. Additionally, if he sold over 25 ounces of this item, or let's say Canadian gold maple leaves, to that LCS, that LCS is required to report the transaction to the IRS. Conversely, if he sold American Gold Eagles or the Gold Buffaloes to his LCS, he would be offered spot for those coins and they don't have a reporting limit to the IRS. So just make sure you understand how your purchases will affect you down the road. Size really does matter. The bigger size coin or bar that you purchase, the lower the premium. This isn't to say that this is always the case, but generally speaking, this is true, just like buying at Costco. Buying larger sizes has its downsides though. For example, it's easier to sell one ounce silver coin than selling 100 ounce silver bars. We call this liquidity. If I bought a 100 ounce silver bar for spot, that's a great price. But let's say I needed cash immediately and I was forced to sell it. Not only can I not portion this 100 ounce bar out and sell only a part of it, I'm forced to sell the entire thing to get cash. A 100 ounce silver bar at spot sells for $2,200, $2,300. It might be difficult to find a buyer for this bar unless you go to an LCS. And they will probably offer you not way under spot, but under spot for it. For silver, I purchase one ounce coins 10 ounce bars, and kilo size bars. Fractional silver has stupid high premiums attached to them. Unless you buy constitutional silver, also known as junk silver, I would stay away from all fractional silver. For gold, I buy one ounce coins and quarter ounce coins. I will get the occasional collector piece for both gold, silver, and platinum, but I don't include these into the stacking discussion. These are just the options that I like for stacking. Finally, my last bit of advice is have fun. And this is the best advice I can give new stackers is to have fun with your stack. We all buy precious metals for different reasons, whether it's wealth preservation, a savings, an investment to collect, whatever your reason, have fun with it. Buy whatever makes you happy to look at your stack. Don't let anyone shame you for your decision. Whatever you do, don't worry too much about making a mistake because mistakes will help you learn and grow. It's a good idea to avoid mistakes when you recognize them, but if you make one, don't sweat it, learn from it. Let it help you rather than drag you down. This is by no means a comprehensive list, but it is 10 topics I thought were really important for new stackers. If you're looking for more info, I've done an in-depth video on each of these topics. You can find it by searching on my channel. If you can think of something I didn't include that would be really helpful for folks, please list it down in the comments below so that people can see it, learn from it, and grow. If you're interested in other topics like this one, check out the other videos I have on my channel discussing in depth how these precious metals can help you preserve and protect your wealth. If you made it this far in the video, you guys and gals are my super stackers and collectors and I appreciate you. Thank you all for watching. This is Campbell's Coins and that is my two cents.